I uh, want to welcome you out to Wednesday night Bible study tonight. We've got uh, several to mention for prayer tonight. Uh, we mentioned Laura Quillen Flowers uh, Sunday night, I believe it was, sun Sunday, and uh, she passed away. Let's remember her family. And uh, Mason Wilcoxon, uh, let's continue to remember him. Uh, Bill Cousins, continue to remember him. Uh, Barbara Casey uh, came through her surgery, and uh, let's remember her as uh, she recovers from that. James Gully's procedure will be tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock on his legs, and let's, uh, let's remember him, continue to remember him. Uh, we've mentioned in the past uh, several weeks Curtis Davis, and I think the uh, he is in the hospital in New Orleans. They've uh, transferred him to New Orleans, so let's uh, remember him. Uh, Jamie Burks, the principal at Rogers High School, is, I think, in Nashville, uh, battling the COVID, and uh, let's, let's remember him. I know they had a, a prayer vigil for him in the Green Hill community uh, one evening this week. Uh, is it Monday? Not last night. And uh, so let's, let's remember remember him. Uh, and as we, when we pray, I uh, always remember our country and the leaders. And I uh, also remember our church and those that uh, coming in that coming in and out the doors and uh, those that join us online. Let's uh, remember, remember each one. Let's go to the Lord now in a word of prayer, and then we'll get started with our Bible study tonight. Uh, we'll, uh, after our Bible study tonight, we're having a business meeting for the first quarter, and uh, let's uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, I thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight, and Lord, uh, thank you for the opportunity we have to approach your throne of grace on behalf of these we've mentioned and uh lord uh we just ask you to be with the the flowers family uh little mason will coxon uh, curtis davis jamie burks bill cousins uh barbara casey james gully as he goes for his procedure tomorrow our country and all its leaders, Lord, that each each one, uh, how we need a revival in our land. That uh, each one that uh, of our leaders, before and each one of us, before any kind of decisions made, that we would seek Your face. And uh, Lord, just lift up our church to You. And uh, Lord, uh, we didn't list him in the list, but Lord, we will just continue to lift up Jimmy Ellis to You. And uh, Miss Glendora. And uh, Lord, uh, thank you again for this opportunity to be in your house and uh, just bless your word tonight and uh, be with these, Lord, that we've mentioned for prayer. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll look with me tonight to Matthew chapter 5, we'll start reading in verse 38 and we'll read down through verse 42. And then we'll go back and uh, make any kind of comments that uh, maybe you got comments, maybe we'll bring out something that uh, brings out a comment from someone else. Uh, and uh, as we go through this tonight, just remember what we've been saying all along going up to this is that uh, how we need Christ in our lives. Now, there, there are some that I understand that preach and teach that the Sermon on the Mount is it. If we could just live the Sermon on the Mount, well, uh, we can't. Christ can live it through us, but you and I can't. And uh, we can strive, but 
We can't apart from Christ. So verse 38 of Matthew chapter 5, it says, uh, You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain or go with him two. Uh, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. So if you will look back with me to verse number 38. Uh, again, uh, remember what Christ said, I came not to do away with the law, in verse 17, I came not to destroy the law or the prophets, I came not to destroy, but I came to fulfill. Uh, here's what I've been thinking about as, as that, verse 38, has been running through my mind today. Uh, as they beat my Lord and Savior before Nailing him to the cross. Uh, I think that maybe the closest thing uh, 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 is that Mel Gibson movie, what was the title of it? The Passion of the Christ. I think that might be the disfigurement of that, what that actor portrayed in that might be the closest that uh, I've seen to what perhaps Christ was, and that probably don't, not even a drop in the bucket the way that guy uh, made that man look with the makeup and everything. But uh, he didn't have to go to the cross. He didn't have to allow them to nail him to the cross. He didn't have to take that beating. But the Lord shows me that by his stripes, Marty Mosley has been healed. And what did Jesus say to those guys? Because you and I, or excuse me, I might say, I'm going to get you because you got me. What did Jesus say? Forgive them for they know not what they do. So, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Uh, today, I think it was today. Could have been yesterday. Anyway, uh, I get updates from all kinds of places on my phone that when something happens. And uh, I noticed yesterday that I had a update from ESPN. And ESPN reported that the police officer had been found guilty. Now, I don't know what sports that involves, but I guess that is national news. And I'm not trying to belittle that. But when we have uh, elected officials telling folks if it's a not guilty verdict, you stay out on the streets until, until what? Uh, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth? Is that what the elected officials were pushing for? I, I don't understand that. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But verse 39 says this, that you, but I say to you that you resist not evil, and the King James Version puts it that way. Other translations of the Bible would say this do not resist the one who is evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him thy left, turn to him the other also. 
And you and you and I might say, well, I've never had anybody to strike me. Well, uh, I don't think I, to my knowledge, uh, never happened too many times to me, uh, if at all. But uh, I think I have been hit one time out of uh, out of anger several years ago. But what about not not physically having anything done to us, but what about somebody saying something about us? That could be as bad as getting slapped across the face. Oh. Uh, one group of writers says this, uh, a Christian is not to be a revengeful person. He is not to be known as a person who holds a grudge. Revenge consumes. It can eat up a person's inner being. It can consume our mind. It can consume our emotions. But often we... I read that verse, I said we, often I read that verse and think of somebody slapping me across the face and uh, in order to get the other other side of the face with the same hand, it would be a backhand. And I'm told that in the Jewish culture or the culture of the day that that would have been the ultimate insult, getting slapped with the backside of a hand. And uh, but a slap in the face can also come by insult, criticism, rumor, abuse, threat, or physical attack. Uh, if you'll turn over with me to Second uh, Corinthians chapter number eleven. In verse number 20. Paul writes the church of Corinth, believe he's writing to us too, for uh, verse 20, for you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you in the face. Uh, the Lord here say, is saying that submission is sometimes the way to overcome that. And you say, well, that's hard. And I'm, I'm thinking about Christ now, right before he, again, right before he went to the cross and how he suffered for me, how he suffered for you, how he suffered for the sins of the world, and he didn't have to. But he did. If you look over with me to Isaiah 53, We won't read the whole whole chapter, but just just uh, read a verse or so. Uh, verse number five of Isaiah fifty three says this: "But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes." We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his, her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. 
And yet when he hung there on the cross, dying for my sins, sins of the whole world, one of those sayings that he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, verse number 40. It says, if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Uh, here's some interesting things I found out about that saying because that that has uh, something to do with the uh, the culture of the day as well and uh i've read this for years but didn't i don't know that i knew uh this particular information here uh the coat referred to was the tunic the inner garment the cloak was the long robe like outer garment a uh, feller by the name of William Barclay says that the Jewish law allowed a man's tunic to be given as a pledge, but the cloak, the the outer garment, uh, could never be taken. The reason was simply that a man could have a number of tunics, the, the underclothing, but he might only have one cloak, the, the outer garment. Given one's cloak, one's good coat, it's difficult. So in other words, you can have my, what my granddaddy used to say, my everyday clothes, you can have them, but don't take my overcoat. But look at what Jesus says here. If they want your tunic, if you want you give them your coat as well. Verse 41 says, if, uh, if whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, you go with them too. Verse 42 says, give to him that asketh thee and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. And uh, one, one group of writers points us to this, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And if you'll turn back with me over to 2 Corinthians for just a minute, this time to chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Verse 7 says, every, uh, every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And some of the things I've studied about this particular verse, uh, give to him that asketh, and from him that would bar of thee, turn thou not away, uh, Some things I've studied uh, pointed it in this direction. What if somebody's praying, Lord, I need this money for such and such. Right now, I don't have it. And in the next instance, you and I, you or I, or you and I, walk in to that person's life. Maybe it's somebody that we've known for years, we hadn't seen for years, but and there we are. And then they ask of us. If we say no, we may be turning down God's one way that God was trying or was answering a prayer. So uh, one one commentary says this, giving should be done personally. 
Jesus Christ is a person. He is related to persons. Therefore, he expects every believer to be personally involved in the lives of others just as he himself is. Too many feel their obligation to give is over when they have given through official channels. But this is not the case of Christ. He demonstrated that the believers to get personally involved in helping others. Lending can help the person who borrows. It can teach him to trust God more and to learn how to be more industrious. The bar borrower has to, get, has to get it in order to pay back what is loaned. And you and I may be an answer to somebody's prayer and we don't know it. And I think we just need to thank for just a minute to the times that we've prayed for something, prayed for someone, and the next thing that I know sometimes is there they are. And I'm going to take you back to some things I've told you about Brother Butler. Sometimes our prayers need some hands. Sometimes our prayers need some feet. Sometimes our prayers need a voice. And let's not be the one that says, uh, no, not, not me. <clears throat> Not me. So, uh, again, he's took the law, and uh, we can we can find that eye for an eye, tooth for tooth in the law. But he's took the law and raised it to another level. And again, pointing me should be pointing to anybody, everybody that reads that, points me to the need of a Savior. Because it's easy. Somebody does us wrong, we're going to do them wrong back. Or maybe, maybe try to get it a little bit worse than what they did it to us. But he says if they smite us on the right cheek, turn the other one to them also. And I, I just have to look to the cross and see that that's what he did. And not only did he say these words, as we've said, and I think now the third time, forgive them for they know not what they do. The first one who laid a stripe on him that night, he died for that man's sins. Just like he died for mine. And the last one who laid a stripe on him. He died for him too. The ones that took his garments and gambled for them, he died for them too. The one who drove the nails in his body and nailed him to the cross, he died for their sins too. Verse 41 again says, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. And the ones that asketh thee, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would bar of thee, turn thou not away. I want to turn to One last place. Now, I may just have to quote it for you if I can't find it. If you turn over with me, one last place tonight to Hebrews chapter 13. Verse number two. 
Hebrews 13, verse number 2. Verse 2, Hebrews 13 says this, uh, be, not, or, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Turn not away those that given to him that asketh thee and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. We may be entertaining the angel unaware. Anybody got anything tonight before we close? We want to thank all y'all for being here. We're gonna, those of you that are here, we're going to have a business meeting here in just a minute, but we want to have a word of prayer and say good evening to the or good night to the folks watching us online tonight. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, tonight for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. Uh, those of us that are in here in person, also those that are watching online, Lord, I ask you, ask you to bless each home. Bless these, Lord, we've mentioned for prayer. Uh, there's some that's lost loved ones, some that's uh, battling diseases of various kinds, some recovering from surgeries, some uh, facing procedures tomorrow. And, uh, Lord, uh, you know each and every need. I thank you for meeting those needs tonight. And the uh, Lord be with us as we go into this business meeting and uh, you have your way in each one of our lives. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And tell the Facebook friends, uh, Lord willing, we'll be on back online Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Y'all have a great week.